Hi, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a diverging bar chart. So what is a diverging bar chart? Let's go with an example uh, that we're going to take from. Uh, online we have the uh, Pew Research Center. They've got this stack bar chart where they're looking at a question. And these are some responses that are kind of like in a Likert style format. We have strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. You can see here it's a stacked uh, bar chart. but there is kind of a not, not a common diverging axis. And if we wanted to create a diverging bar chart out of something similar to this data, with this data, it would look something like this, where we'd have a starting access point and then it would diverge from left to right. So on the right, we have agree and strongly disagree, fanning out to the right, and fanning out to the left, we have disagree and strongly disagree. So it kind of diverges from the middle instead of having that stacked a bar chart here that's starting at one end and just kind of going to the end. So it gives kind of a different view, same data, but it gives kind of a different view of uh, the data. So I'll show you how to create something like this. Uh, I, I got some insight from uh, John Peltier's blog. He's got a great blog out there. He's an Excel guru. And this is what I came up with with this particular set of data. So I'm gonna just going to take some of the data in a table here. So I've got this particular table here where I took the data from here, right? You got your 10, 45, 39, 5, 10, 34, 39, 17 for the two uh, uh, variables here. And I just kind of plotted it here. So if you've got kind of a Likert style response here, you can plot it here on the top. Then your different sections here on the row. So some, some things we need to do with the data before we chart it out is when you think about our midpoint, our midpoint is going to be between uh, disagree and agree. So it's going to be over here. So anything, when you, when you think about anything to the left of this line, maybe this imaginary line between E and F should be negative because we want to go it, we want to take it to the left portion of that line and anything to the right should be positive, right? So if this is negative, we have to turn these into negative numbers. I can just type a negative one here and control C to copy select this range of data and paste it, paste what I copied here using the paste special and multiplying it. So it's going to multiply these numbers by negative one and it's going to give me my negative numbers here now. Now that's great and all I need to do is insert a chart. So I'm going to insert the 2D uh, stacked bar chart. So now you notice that it's kind of done it pretty well. It's diverged it from zero. And all I need to do now, let's just make this a little bit bigger and bring this down here. Let's make this, let's just do make, make this down here so I can still see this table. So you can see Excel has not charted it correctly because there's more columns than rows. So it's um, taken that and given the horizontal categories uh, that that particular strongly disagree to strongly agree. All we need to do is just uh, switch the row and columns and it's going to properly chart that out where we have it's similar to the table now. Right? So now I just need to change some things in the chart. I don't need these labels uh, or I don't need the, the access labels here because I'm going to use a, a text box for them. So selecting that label or selecting my label here, press control one so I can bring up the formatting uh, navigation, the formatting pane here. And for the labels, let's just not have them. Let's just get rid of them. And the label position, we're just going to say uh, none. So we're not going to have any labels. So those disappear. So the first thing we notice is uh, we've got our strongly disagree, disagree, and agree, and strongly disagree. You can see here, agree is over here. To the right, it kind of charts it out well, right? Agree comes first, and strongly agree comes second when we go from the middle to the right. But from middle to the left, it doesn't chart it right, right? Strongly disagree should come last. It should be at the end, right? It should be the furthest to the, to the left, but it's not. What we can do is just change the ordering of the data. So just select data, and then we have our uh, ordering category here. I can just change disagree and, and or I can change strongly disagree and move it down. All right. So once I moved it down, you can see the strongly disagree is moved out over there. Click OK. And that has changed it for the chart. But it hasn't changed it for the legend. You can see that the legend 
um, should also reflect it. And it's just something that we need to kind of change in the table here. So what I can do is ins move this over here and create another strongly disagree column heading. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And in this particular area, I'm just going to put non a non-applicable function, so equals NA, press tab, and then press control enter because it will execute it for these range of cells there. So now it's going to show up there, right? I also need to add this in to the chart now. Click the chart, go to oops design, and select data, and I'll probably want to add that in there. So I'll add the series name, it's going to be the same thing here, and the series value is going to be just these values. It's not really, really going to plot anything on this chart because it's NA, but it's going to put another uh, value here in the legend. You can see it, it showed up here as last. We don't want, actually want, we want that to kind of show up first, so I'm going to have to move that. So I go back into select data. And just for the sec second um, str strongly disagree, this actually goes all the way to the top now. It has nothing, but it goes up to the top. Click OK. All right, so now that strongly disagree, you can see that it's that dark bluish. Um, and it goes here. If I wanted to keep the coloring scheme the same, you can see that it's got this dark, dark brown, or dark tan, light tan, and then kind of light green and dark green. I can change it here. So we can see here, we actually have our disagree here. Let's change that. Well, let's start first from left to right. So the strongly disagree is that one. So if I click on that, you can see that it's selected. Right click the fill. That was that uh, darkish, darkish tan. Let's do that. So now I clicked on disagree, right click. And this was that lightish tan. Let's make that that color. Click on this gray, which is the gray, right click and make that fill it was that light green and then the last one is the strongly agree right click and let's make that that dark green All right now the other color that we need to figure out is this legend you can see now the legend is kind of this bluish color we want to make it the same as this one and there's nothing really to select on the chart you can't really select it to do that but you can actually go to the pane here the navigate the pane here and select that drop down you can see that we are on strongly disagree we want to get to that first strongly disagree or one of these two right so you can just kind of select that and see which one's selected on the chart here you can see it's not selected because it's not there but you can see the table here is selected now there's no nothing to right click on the cell so another way to do it is you can click that paint bucket go under fill and let's change it to that color right so we want to have it that color you can see now that it's changed here and what we can do now is just get rid of the middle one. Even though this is the one that's painting or putting this data here, for the legend's sake, we, we want that one to show up first. Kind of so it visually goes from left to right, strongly disagree, disagree, and then agree and strongly agree. So, so click the legend once, click it again to select that one and press delete. Now that one's gone, right? Now if we wanted to add the labels, we can add the labels here. Uh, right click and add data labels we can have it there right click add data labels and right click and add the data labels for that one and add the data labels for this one but you'll notice that it added data labels and it added that negative and maybe we didn't want that negative we we, we wanted to have positive numbers right because that's what the question is asking. So to change that, we can just change the number formatting. Even though the numbers are negative here, let's change the number formatting. Formatting. So I, I select that, right click, go under Format Data Labels, and under the number, we can create a custom number format. Select on Custom, and the custom number format is actually just. I already select. I already did this earlier. So. All you need to do is type zero, semicolon, zero, semicolon, zero. So basically what it's saying is the first value is a positive value. We're going to give it zero. The second value is a positive value. We're even going to give it zero. We're not going to give it any negative uh, numbering format. 
and the third value, I think it's a, if it's a zero, not positive, negative, but if it's a zero, we're going to give it a zero, no formatting. So essentially this just turns the formatting around for the second value here, and instead of giving it a negative, it's just going to give it uh, maybe a non-negative, non-positive, it just doesn't put that negative there. You can see that it's done that already here. Now I want to do that for this uh, the series here, for, for disagree. Do the same thing where we have, uh, we're going to do custom number formatting, you can see here it's already selected. If you didn't have if you didn't have that custom number for item adding here, you would just click here in the field here, type in zero, semicolon, zero, semicolon, zero, semicolon, and just click add. And that's what would do it here. Now we can also do the same for the access if we wanted to do that. And this is probably a good example of, of the steps that you would go through to do that. So if I went under number, I can type in custom and oh it already it already had that too so I didn't have to add it so you can see that it's done that but, but since I'm not really going to show the axis here I don't really need it control Z to undo that let's just let's just delete the axis or just delete the axis label so the axis label the axis is selected press delete and that's gone now I need to have my text boxes here or let's see, let's just uh, get rid of these these grid lines first. Press select the grid lines. Press delete. That makes it look a little more cleaner. I have my axis here, my my axis here, axis here, so that's fine. So now I just select anywhere in the plot area. Let's move this over a little bit. And now I need to add text boxes here. So the text boxes is going to be under insert. Go to text box and. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, well, before I add the text box, press escape to get out of that. You can see that uh, the value here, 34 and 45, it kind of looks swapped, right? So what happens is uh, Excel painted it from bottom up. So this this value, this row is starting from the bottom. Let's change that. And what we can do is collect the pot, select the plot area or select the, select the axis here. Let me select my axis. Oh, good. Now let me go into the, I think it's under access options and access options here. What we need to do is click this checkbox that says categories in reverse order. So it's going to paint that differently now. So we have, uh, let's see, the some people can only be brought to reason in a hard physical way. That's going to be the first one. So it's going to represent the order of the table. Uh, this is just the way Excel does it. It's going to bring usually the first, the, the first uh, row, it's going to paint from bottom up. In, in this particular instance, but we just reverse the order. So now let's go and insert the text box. So under insert, we have text box. I'm going to draw it out here. And then when it's selected, go into the formula bar and just type equal. And I'm going to take the value in the cell, right? So you can see that it's filled out uh, sheet 2 C3, which is this particular cell, press enter, and the text is brought in here. Let's make it a little bit longer. And do the same thing for this particular portion. Go under insert text box. Actually, what, what I can do is I already have this this the dimensions here. I can select, let's press escape. I can select the text box itself. Let's select it. Right, press control D to duplicate it and bring it down. And instead of this reference we're going to make it uh, C4. I'll just backspace, press 4, press enter, and now you see that the value has changed and it's reflective of the values in C4, that particular text. Move it up. And if we wanted to have our title uh, be the same, so you know we have our title here, we can do the same thing. Close this. And bring. let's make this a little bit bigger now. We have our chart title. I'm going to point that to this box. Type equal in that box and now you can see that it's taken that there. Unfortunately that title is another object within the chart. If I wanted to add that subtitle there I have to add another text box. Move this down a little bit. This needs to move down of course. Oh now I need to kind of resize that and maybe resize this a little bit. 
and move it down and bring in another text box go under insert text box and go into form bar equal and reference this cell so now that has brought that over I can move it up here and move the legend up right click format legend and have it on the top Oops. well we can adjust that later close that and I can just move this over here and now we have our diverging bar chart so we have our middle here to the right we have our agree strongly disagree to our left we have our disagree and strongly disagree and so it kind of gives you just another view of a stacked bar chart but we're diverging it from a common middle area so I hope that helps Thanks for watching.